So switches are important in a pinball machine, right? So I got one here. It's exactly the one from the picture. And I took the picture because you might be able to read it a little bit better. So you got two types of switches in pinball machines. That's direct switches and metric switches. So modern machines or even like noteboard stuff like Stern Spike, P3 Rock, Fast, they all run only direct switches. So there are, there are typically no, no switch matrices because like inputs on CPUs became cheap. Uh, traditionally, we have used like matrices just to save wiring and CPU inputs. Now we show this in a minute. And switches are usually soldered. I mean, this part here is soldered. And then on the other side, you've got 100 mil Molex connectors to your board. So those connectors. And, and now this is a switch electronically. So there's one input here. And then there are two outputs. I mean, there are like three, three ones here, right? And you could ask why there are three. And that's, that's actually a good question. And we do not need all three in PIMO. Um, you sometimes see R3 used, but they're not needed. Um, because like this switch goes, usually connects two to one, but it can also connect two to three. So this goes basically down here, right? So that's, that's the switch that so goes like this. That's the, the idea here. And on this switch, like on the right, that's C for common. You, can, you might be able to read it roughly here. And then there's normally closed, that's one because it's normally closed and like in the in the neutral um yeah, neutral level and then there's normally open and i think could I do it right okay now this is normally closed here i can read it here normally closed is this one so this is one and three is this one this is normally open so that's open by default so now open if i press it now um this one will be connected right and normally closed so this one will be connected now now those two will be connected and if it's open those two will be connected that's the general idea how switches work how those micro switches work which are like the most common switches in pinball and for direct switches that's super simple and you got like your power supply here and then you got like a so-called um pull up so like there's a resistor which keeps the voltage up to the 12 volts. So let's put this as 12 volts. And there's a resistor which uh, keeps the voltage up. And, and then there's like the input, that just a, that's a voltmeter. It's like just an electronic, electronic sign or like an input. So there we sense the voltage. And this, yeah, this resistor should be here. And now like there, there will be like 12 volts here because that's, yeah, that's connected to the power supply, right? Yeah, so basically there will be like 12 volts here because this voltage is not going anywhere except like through this voltmeter. Then if you like if you close the switch now, if you close it, then this will be connected here. The resistance of this wire will now be like really, really low, maybe over one or over, over two ohms. And this one is typically at one kilo ohm, so 1000 ohms. And then now the voltage will go near near zero volts at this point here, and the input will detect this as low or an end, or in pinball active. So if the ground is ground, if if a switch is ground, ground, then it will be detected as active. That's how this works usually. So this is this um, input will detect if the voltage at this point is like below half the voltage of your power supply typically. So if this is 12 volts. And if this drops below six volts, then the the input will detect this as active, which active. For optos, that's usually inverted, so they will be like like default closed here. And then if uh, if the light beam breaks, they will open. So that's why we typically connect this those as uh, configure those as normally. Uh, normally open, right? So this 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 input type which you configure in your in your pinball configuration, so that those optos are inverted. That's the reason for that. They they usually draw um yeah conduct voltage and draw the voltage to zero, and if they they break, they are they are opening. 
So that's how direct switches work. Uh, like you typically share ground on all switches. So imagine like multiple of those in parallel, they all share ground. And if you look at like a board here, for example, here, we got two banks of no, like three banks here of inputs. So that's eight switches each here. And this typically has like one ground. It's also marked ground here. And um, how many is it? Eight, eight switches. And then you like share ground. Often you just solder ground from one switch to the next and so on to, to the last switch. And the other side is then connected to one of the inputs on the board. So that's how you typically write direct switches. The most common stuff uh, which exists in, in modern machines. Um, okay. And the next thing is like switch matrices. That's a little bit more complicated here. And like this board here, the, the Cobra pin has a switch matrix, but it's, it became really, really rare on, on modern boards. So this works a little bit differently. So the idea is that we want to save inputs. And we do this by putting switches in a matrix and then only enabling like one, one of the the rows uh, on on this matrix i put like a two two by two matrix here so we got like power here it's 12 volts again and we got our pull up resistors here and our measuring points here so those are basically our two inputs and then um, voltage goes to pin one which is weird looks weird but it, because it is and we got a diet which uh, connects this to the common output. And as you can see, this is conducting by default, so this does nothing by default. But if the switch closes, then the current will go to one via the diode to common, from common to three, and then down here to like a transistor. And to control this, we will either enable this transistor here or the other one on the right. So first we activate this one, then we can see if this switch is active and this switch is active by measuring those two points. Then we disable this transistor here, enable this one, and measure for those two switches. And like it looks a little bit weird, but that's how it's actually wired. So it goes here from the diet here, and then down here to ground. How this circuit is closed, um, and they basically use this connector just as an additional soldering point. So it's not. This is not needed. So you could also like just put the diode into the wire, but this is probably easier to first solder the diode to the switch and then solder the wire to this one. So that's, I guess that's the reason why they do it this way. Um, but this is how switch uh, matrices work. You need the diode because otherwise like, um, it could like go from here through this switch to this switch and then back to this switch. And then we would like like fake activations in the matrix. So that that can happen without the diet but if you put the diet that's super safe and also works super super well um yeah on on this board here we got here we got like switch matrix out eight connectors and switch matrix in eight connectors so we can have like 64 switches with just those two connectors and on those con eight 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 so this is just 24 and this is 64 connectors uh, 64 switches which is like a lot of lot of switches and not very much wiring for that. It's a little bit more complicated and in a homebrew I would think twice before running a switch matrix. But it works. That's already how switches in general in pinball work and how they are wired electronically.